The Sushruta Samhita or Susruta Sawita is an ancient Sanskrit text on medicine and surgery, and one of the most important such treatises on this subject to survive from the ancient world. The Compendium of Susruta is one of the foundational texts of Ayurveda, alongside the Karaka Samhita, the Bila Samhita, and the medical portions of the Bauer manuscript. Date the early scholar Rudolf Hohenler proposed that some concepts from the Susruta Samhita could be found in the Atapatha Brahmana, that he dated to the 6th century BCE. However, during the last century, scholarship on the history of Indian medical literature has advanced substantially, and firm evidence has accumulated that the Susruta Samhita is a work of several historical layers whose composition may have begun in the last centuries BCE and was completed in its present form by another author who redacted its first five chapters and added the long final chapter, the Uttara Tantra. It is likely that the Susruta Samhita was known to the scholar Drabala, which gives the latest date for the version of the work that has come down to us today. Authorship. Susruta is named in the text as the author who presented the teaching of his guru, Devodazar. He is said to have been a physician, originally of Kerala, who worked in Varanasi, sometime between 1200 BC and 600 BC. One of the earliest known mentions of the name is from the Bauer manuscript, where Susruta is listed as one of the ten sages residing in the Himalayas. Texts also suggest that he learned surgery at Varanasi from Lord Anvantari, the god of medicine in Hindu mythology, G.D. Singhal, who translated the Susruta Sawita, dubbed Susruta the father of surgery, on account of the extraordinarily accurate and detailed accounts of surgery to be found in the work. The Samhita locates its author, Susruta, in Varanasi. Later commentators mention that another author redacted the first five chapters and added the final section, the Uttara Tantra. Some authors state that this redactor was called Nagarjuna, but many historical questions surround this name, and the history of the layers of the Susruta Samhita remains a large and difficult research problem. It has also become clear that there are several ancient authors called Susruta, and that they should not be conflated. Rao speculated that there may be an original layer to the text which might indeed date to the Elder Susruta, which was redacted by another. Sushruta in the 1st century AD, with still later editions and redactions by Nagarjuna leading to the extant texts. A redaction by one Nagarjuna is explicitly mentioned by Dalhana, the author of the primary commentary on the Sushruta Samhita. Transmission. Our knowledge of the contents of the Susruta Samhita is based on editions of the text that were published during the 19th and early 20th centuries. Especially noteworthy is the edition by the great editor and scholar Vajra Yadav Asam and Trivikramatmajarakaya, that also includes the commentary of the scholar Dalhana. These editions themselves are based on just a small number of manuscripts that were available to the editors in the major publishing centers of Bombay, Calcutta and elsewhere, sometimes as few as three or four manuscripts. But a large number of manuscripts of the Susruta Samhita survive in libraries in India and abroad today, perhaps a hundred or more, and these have never been compared and studied with a view to creating a critical edition of the Susruta Samhita. Contents The Susruta Samhita, in its extant form, is divided into 184 chapters and contains descriptions of 1,120 illnesses, 700 medicinal plants, 64 preparations from mineral sources and 57 preparations based on animal sources. The text discusses surgical techniques of making incisions, probing, extraction of foreign bodies, alkali and thermal cauterization tooth extraction, excisions, and trocars for draining abscess, draining hydrocele and ascitic fluid, the removal of the prostate gland, urethral stricture dilatation, vesiculolithotomy, hernia surgery, caesarean section, management of hemorrhoids, fistulae, laparotomy and management of intestinal obstruction, perforated intestines, 
and accidental perforation of the abdomen with protrusion of omentum and the principles of fracture management, viz. traction, manipulation, appositions and stabilization including some measures of rehabilitation and fitting of prosthetics. It enumerates six types of dislocations, 12 varieties of fractures, and classification of the bones and their reaction to the injuries, and gives a classification of eye diseases including cataract surgery. A convenient overview of its contents was published by the Indian National Science Academy in 1980, and an extremely detailed analysis of every chapter is provided in Moylan Bald's History of Indian Medical Literature. The Sasruta Samhita is divided into two parts. The first five chapters, which are considered to be the oldest part of the text, and the latter section, that was added by the author Drabala. The first five books, comprising 120 chapters, are the Sutra Stana, the Nidana Stana, dedicated to etiology, the signs and symptoms of important surgical diseases and those ailments which have a bearing on surgery. The Ararastana covers the rudiments of embryology and human anatomy, along with instructions for venesection, the positioning of the patient for each vein, and the protection of vital structures. It also includes the essentials of obstetrics. The Kalpastana deals with the nature of poisons and the management, including vegetable poisons, the taxonomy and poisons of snakes, and the bites of rats, spiders and other creatures. The Sakatse Stana describes the principles of therapeutic management. It covers SR surgical conditions, including obstetrical emergencies and chapters on geriatrics and aphrodisiacs. The Uttara Tantra contains the remaining four specialities, namely surgery, the care of children, therapy for the whole body, and the exclusion of spirits. The surgical portion of the Uttara Tantra is famous for its descriptions of diseases of the eye, the ear, the nose and the head, including cataract surgery. The compendium is dedicated to other disciplines as well. Sasruta emphasizes that unless students possess enough knowledge of relevant sister branches of learning, they cannot attain proficiency in their own subject of study. The Samhita represents an encyclopedic approach to medical learning, with special emphasis on Salya and Salakya, and can be thought of as a comprehensive treatise on the entire medical discipline. Surgical procedures described. Sushruta points out that hemorrhage can be arrested by apposition of the cut edges with stitches, application of styptic decoctions, by cauterization with chemicals or heat. In ancient times, the practice of surgery, and hence its development, were closely associated with warfare. The vrana or injury, says Sushruta, involves the breakdown of body components and may occur in one or more of the following tissues, skin, flesh, blood vessels, sinews, bones, joints, internal organs of chest and abdomen and vital structures. Classically vrana, the wound, is considered to be the explosion of the underlying pathological structure. It is, in Sushruta's words, the sixth stage of a continuous process, which starts with sodha. Sushruta says that in the first stage, the ulcer is unclean and hence called a dusta vrana. By proper management it becomes a clean wound, a sodha vrana. Then there is an attempt at healing and is called Rumana Vrana and when the ulcer is completely healed, it is a Rudavrana. Sushruta has advocated the use of wine with incense of cannabis for anesthesia, although the use of henbane in of Samahini and Sanjivani are reported at a later period, Sushruta was the pioneer of anesthesia. Sushruta describes eight types of surgical procedures. Excision is a procedure whereby a part or whole of the limb is cut off from the parent. Incision is made to achieve effective drainage or exposure of underlying structures to let the content out. Scraping or scooping is carried out to remove a growth or flesh of an ulcer, tartar of teeth, etc. The veins, hydrocele and ascitic fluid in the abdomen are drained by puncturing with special instrument. The sinuses and cavities with foreign bodies are probed for establishing their size, sight, number, shape, position, situation, etc. 
Sravana is to be carried out in skin diseases, vidradas, localized swelling, etc. In case of accidental injuries and in intentional incisions, the lips of the wound are opposed and united by stitching. To obtain proficiency and acquiring skill and speed in these different types of surgical manipulations, Sushruta had devised various experimental modules for trying each procedure. For example, incision and excision are to be practiced on vegetables and leather bags filled with mud of different densities, scraping on hairy skin of animals, puncturing on the vein of dead animals and lotus stalks, probing on moth-eaten wood or bamboo, scarification on wooden planks smeared with beeswax, etc. On the subject of trauma, Sushruta speaks of six varieties of accidental injuries encompassing almost all parts of the body. Sushruta also classifies the bones and their reaction to injuries, the varieties of dislocation of joints and fractures of the shaft. He classifies and details the six types of dislocations and twelve varieties of fractures. He gives the principles of fracture treatment, viz. traction, manipulation, appositions and stabilization. Sushruta has described the entire orthopedic surgery, including some measures of rehabilitation, in his work. As war was a major cause of injury, the name Salya Tantra for this branch of medical learning is derived from Salya, the arrow of the enemy, which in fights used to be lodged in the body of the soldiers. He emphasizes that removal of foreign bodies is fraught with certain complications if the seat of the salia be a mama. Sushruta also discusses certain surgical conditions of anorectal region. He describes how to manage hemorrhoids and fistulae. Different types of incision to remove the fistulous tract, langalaka, ardalangalaka, sarvabhadra. Kandrada and Kajurapatrika are described for adoption according to the type of fistula. Sushruta was well aware of the urinary stones, their varieties, the anatomy of urinary bladder along with its relations is well recorded in the chapter on urinary stones. Varieties of stones, their signs and symptoms, the method of extraction and operative complication are given in detail. Apart from the above, surgery of intestinal obstruction, perforated intestines, accidental injuries to abdomen in which protrusion of omentum occurs are also described along with their management. A number of Sushruta's contributions to medicine are listed below. The Samhita lays down the basic principles of plastic surgery by advocating a proper physiotherapy before the operation and describes various methods, or different types of defects, viz. release of the skin for covering small defects, rotation of the flaps to make up for the partial loss and Pedicle flaps for covering complete loss of skin from an area. He has mentioned various methods including sliding graft, rotation graft and pedicle graft. Reconstruction of a nose which has been cut off using a flap of skin from the cheek has been described. Labioplasty too has received attention in the Samahita. Transmission outside India. The text was translated to Arabic as Kitab i Susrud in Baghdad during the 8th century by a physician known as Manka. It was known to the Khmer king. Yasavarman I. Sasruta was also known as a medical authority in Tibetan literature, medieval and modern reception. Both the Sasruta Samhita and the Karakar Samhita were translated into Arabic during the 8th century at the instructions of a member of the Barmakid family of Baghdad. The work was known as Kitab Shah Shun al Hindi in Arabic, or alternatively as Kitab i Sujarud. The 9th century Persian physician Razas was familiar with the text. In India, a major commentary on the text, known as Nibanda Sam Grahab, was written by Dalhana in California, 1200 CE. The Arabic translation was received in Europe by the end of the medieval period. There is no evidence that in Renaissance Italy, the Branca family of Sicily and Gasparo Taglicazi were familiar with the rhinoplastic techniques mentioned in the Sushruta Samhita. Although these techniques bore some similarity to Sushruta's more advanced techniques, 
The Adisha Princeps of the text was prepared by Madhusudan Dutta. A partial English translation by U. C. Dutta appeared in 1883. English translations of the full text were published by A. M. Kunta and Kunjalal Bishagratna. The best modern English translation of the Susruta Samhita is that of P. V. Sharma, published in three volumes, 1999-2001. Bibliography. Dr. Rudolf Hohenler, Medicine of India, D.P. Agrawal, Sushruta, The Great Surgeon of Yore, Chari P.S., Sushruta and Our Heritage, Indian Journal of Plastic Surgery, Rana Rian Aurora B.S., History of Plastic Surgery in India, Journal of Postgraduate Medicine, Gunaka Mulli, Plastic Surgery in Ancient India, Alfterhide. C. Rodriguez Martin, and Langsyern, The Cambridge Encyclopedia of Human Paleopathology, Cambridge University Press, ISBN 0 521 55203 6, Dwivedi, Girish and Dwivedi, Sridhar, History of Medicine, Sushruta, The Clinician, Teacher par Excellence, National Informatics Center, Kearns, Susanna C.J., and Nash, June E., Leprosy, Encyclopedia Britannica, Kutambian, Ancient Indian Medicine, Orient Longman, ISBN 81-250-1521-3, Locke, Stephen etc., The Oxford Illustrated Companion to Medicine, USA, Oxford University Press, ISBN 0-19-262950-6